The oldest human art dates back to the Stone Age, where the first creative works were made from shell, stone, and paint. As mankind continued to evolve, so did art, but with time, this value was lost and other careers embraced. The Art and Finance Conference that was held on the 28th of March 2019 in Nairobi proved that art has elevated. The two-day conference that was officiated by Her Excellency the First Lady Margaret Kenyatta was about the building structure, institutions, and value chains that will allow the art to tell their stories to the world through visual arts. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to join you in celebrating talent, creativity, commitment, and passion for the arts. Looking around this room, it's evident that art has the power to unite people in a shared journey of aesthetic appreciation and interpretation. We have come together to affirm its profound power, but also to challenge conventional thinking of the creative arts sector and to imagine the potential and economic impact of this industry. To see this sector as what it could be, no longer limited or confined to traditional views. Today, we are here to have conversations about art and sports as an investment and as a contributor to Kenya's economic development. We need to discuss how the creative sector can be a provider of jobs for our children and youth. We're here to affirm the potential of the creative sector as an important source of development. Art in whatever form, expressive or creative, is a commodity that transcends borders. The viability of creative arts as an economic pursuit for our children has been something people in my generation and our parents' generation have been apprehensive about. I'm afraid that this apprehension has unfortunately filtered down to our children. Many times we have imposed careers on our children, we have pushed them to consider becoming engineers, lawyers, doctors, teachers, anything that to us has spelt decent employment. However, as a parent, I've now seen how our children can thrive in their creative endeavors. Our youth, commonly referred to as millennials, want to earn a living quite differently. They want to pursue their passion and I urge us not to fight them. I applaud the organizers of this conference for their boldness in investing in an initiative that will change our thinking of creative arts in this country. Creative art is powerful and can have real and lasting meaning beyond the money it earns. With those remarks, I now declare this conference officially launched. important aspect of sustainability. It covers all three components, social, economical, and environmental sustainability. In social sustainability, art helps us keep in touch with our roots and preserve our culture by telling stories of our ancestors, how they lived and what they valued most. Art also helps us live in harmony and appreciate our different can cultures. Realistically um, engage is, is going to be key, and it's a question of timing as well. Um, as Dr. Lagata said, 
a lot of thinking and work has gone into preparing this um, initiative. But we've got to really think and brainstorm around how we can realistically get private sector on board. Private sector will respond if there are some realistic, let's say, low-hanging fruits. Are there tax breaks, for instance, if I'm giving, uh, contributing X amounts, is this something that can be expensed and can actually help in my tax management? And as part of the art community, I am honored to have been asked by the ambassadors of Kenya to curate and coordinate a photographic art exhibition. All ambassadors have jointly come together taking photographs themselves. How do they see Kenya when they arrive? So it's a photographic exhibition called Through the Diplomat's Lens. And we're having it at the National Museum. Possibly we had set the date for 30th of May. However, we've just been notified that there's a big UN General Assembly happening that week. So we might have to shift it a week or two. So dates will be confirmed, but you'll all be invited. And it's ambassadors coming together for charity. All the funds that we're raising are going to three uh, charities, a children's home, an elderly people's home, and the third one that I'm really excited about is an institution for photography. Photography is art. It's a universal language. You can take photography anywhere. So each ambassador has been asked to take 10 photographs, we have a panel of professional photographers, ambassadors and Kenyans pulled together, sitting actually in my house today for the next three days, judging and selecting four of those photographs that then will be printed, each a limited edition of 12. I have managed and uh, got Nikon on board and they're sponsoring all the printing. So it's a charitable event and we're gonna have the big opening at the National Museum. Um, we want to make the National Museum more important, more usable, more visible. Every visitor should come and visit them. Um. Artists practice environmental sustainability by recycling waste products and converting them into murals, paintings, and sculptures. Most environmental activists use art as a tool of relaying their message of conservation. Art is a mirror of reality. It beckons us to examine the world around us and consider what our relation with the environment is. Are we building it or destroying it? Are we part and parcel of its problems or are we helping to create good solutions for progress? I wish both the organizers and participants fruitful discussions in this inaugural arts and financing meeting. I truly hope that it will culminate in phenomenal careers that will contribute towards economic development. Art is essential in sustainable development goal 8 and 9. In a continent that's battling unemployment, it serves as a source of employment. Artists are innovators and creators, and with this ability, artists are very resourceful in building resilient infrastructure, promoting sustainable industrialization, and fostering innovation. In conclusion, art is important, and in the words of J.F. Kennedy, if art is to nourish the roots of our culture, then society must set the artist free to follow his vision wherever it takes him.